Okay, here we are, part three. I've already covered in part one how to take the tool that Magnuson gives you and upload your information from your truck's ECU, send it to Magnuson, get it back, and flash your truck. In part two, I showed you how to strip the truck down in preparation for installing the supercharger. And in part three, we're going to start actually installing the Magnuson supercharger in your 5th gen Toyota or FJ Cruiser. So if you want to see how this all goes out, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. <laughs> Okay, let's jump right into this. If your truck does not have the air injection system, the next few steps won't apply to you. I'll leave chapters below so you can skip ahead. But for those like myself with air injection, this is what you want to do. The first thing you're going to do is on the driver's side is pull the electrical connection to the top of the air pump. Now don't forget, there's two of these and we'll cover that. There's one on either side of your engine. Pull the pin. After you disconnect the electrical, there's three bolts, three nuts that are holding this to the engine. You're going to want to disconnect those. You're going to need an extension. Takes a little doing, but you'll get it. And you're going to have to use your fingers, as you can see. But it's doable. So disconnect those three mounting bolts that are holding the pump to the engine. Your next step is to remove these two bolts holding this flange to the side of the air pump. It's tough to see, but you'll know what I'm talking about. Do not lose the gasket that is in there. Make sure you don't lose that gasket. You see what I'm saying? Okay, with that disconnected, just pull the pump up and put it out of the way. Just place it to the side. It's going right back in after you install the spark plugs, but for now, just set it to the side. No worries. Once you have that air pump on the driver's side out of the way, go to the passenger side and repeat the exact same process. Exactly. Verbatim. Don't deviate. These guys are going right back in after you remove the spark plugs. So, repeat the same steps and you're good to go. The next thing you're going to want to do is remove the ignition coil bolts. There's three on each side of your engine. One for each spark plug, obviously. After you get those bolts out, remove the electrical connector from each one and do it carefully because you do not want to replace this harness, trust me. Now take the spark plugs that Magnuson supplied you with and apply a, a very light film of anti-seize to each one. Now pull out the ignition coils and replace the spark plugs one at a time to maintain the coils in their original locations. That's important. On just about every spark plug, I had to use a telescopic magnet to get the tel to get the spark plug out and then to seat the new one in place, but otherwise they went in pretty easily. Don't forget to gap them. And you want to torque each spark plug to 15 foot-pounds. And then when you reinstall the ignition coils after the plugs are in, you want to 
torque goes down to 7.4 foot-pounds or 10 newton meters. Once you have all the spark plugs installed, all the ignition coils back in place, all the ignition coil electrical plugs reconnected, you're going to want to reinstall the secondary air pumps on the driver's side and the passenger side. Just do the process in reverse. Three bolts, two nuts, do not forget the gaskets. After you have the bolts and the two nuts and the gasket back in place, simply hook the electrical connector back up to pumps on the driver's and passenger side, and that is out of the way. So the next thing we're going to be doing is removing the fan and the radiator shroud. But here on my particular application, while I have that out, I'm also upgrading from the OEM radiator to a CSF all aluminum radiator at the same time. This is something you may want to do as well, so I do show the process for both. So the first thing you're going to want to do is remove this little white plastic hose clamp that's attached to the radiator shroud right there. The next thing you're going to do is take the hose clamp off the thermostat housing. Remove that clamp, slide it right out of the way. And then remove the three nuts holding the thermostat housing to the block and remove it and remove the thermostat, but save the thermostat. And stick a rag in there while it's wide open for now, obviously. Now, if you have air injection, you're going to want to remove this clip right here. You won't be using this clip again. They're going to give you one to use with the Magnuson kit. Okay, now you're going to take the four nuts that are holding your fan on off. They're tough to get to. It takes a little while. It took me a little while. It was harder to do than on a Land Cruiser, I'll tell you that. But remove those four nuts and then... On the driver's side, right where my hand is, there's a nut holding the fan shroud on. Remove that nut as well. The next step is removing the three bolts holding the radiator overflow to the radiator shroud. They were a little bit of a pain to get to, but you can get them. Pull those three bolts out and then take the uh, reservoir right out of the way or the overflow right out of the way. Bam. And then disconnect the overflow hose from the radiator. Now this next step is where I veer off a little bit because the manual tells you to remove the upper and lower radiator hoses so you can get the fan shroud out. But I'm going to be pulling the entire radiator out. So there's going to be a little bit of a diversion here but it's still the same thing. For the straight up stock radiator Keeping the factory radiator, remove the upper hose like I'm doing right now and remove the lower hose. On the passenger side, there's a bolt holding these two hard lines to your air conditioner to your radiator shroud. It's a 12 millimeter. You're going to want to get a long ratchet, get down there and pull that bad boy out. Because I couldn't squeeze a camera down there, I'm going to show you the diagram from the manual. All the arrows, the yellow, red, and green, show you where you need to disengage clips so you can pull the sh fan shroud out. Once you have everything disconnected, grab the fan and the fan shroud at one time and mind your radiator. Make sure your fan doesn't slide up the face of your radiator if you're keeping the radiator. If you're upgrading it, you still don't want to damage it. I managed to get these both out without damaging them, and I have all the faith in the world that you can do the same. So there you go. If you're keeping the factory radiator, after you pull the fan shroud out, you're going to want to cover it with a piece of cardboard to protect it, so that when you pull the crank pulley, you don't accidentally hit it with an impact. And when you remove the fan, take two of the nuts and throw them back on the pulley so it doesn't fall off. Now, if you're going to stick with the factory radiator, 
this is what you're looking at. But if you're going to upgrade to a CSF or other type of radiator, this is what you want to do. Real quick, the CSF was a perfect, complete drop-in. Everything lined up perfectly, everything was incredibly well built, and everything bolted up perfectly. So if you want to upgrade your radiator, this is what you want to do right now. There's four bolts holding the radiator in the engine bay. And there's one on the bottom, one up behind the headlight on either side. You got to pull those bolts out. I believe they were 12 millimeter. I have no idea why Toyota decided to put these bolts facing forward behind the bumper because you have to remove the bumper to pull the radiator out in order to get at these bolts. But once you do, the radiator is now held in by nothing other than transmission cooling lines, which is what you're going to want to jump on next if you're replacing the radiator. Remember that. After you remove those four mounting bolts for the radiator, jump underneath the truck and remove the two small lines connected to the bottom of the radiator for your transmission cooling lines. Disconnect those, make sure you have something to catch the little bit of tranny fluid that's gonna come out, and then you're good to go, except for these two plastic clips that are located right above where the bolts that secure the radiator are. Push these two clips up and now the radiator is completely free. Now you can simply pull the radiator straight up and out. And I managed to pull this radiator out without even putting a ding in it. And you can too. That is if you are upgrading your radiator. If you're not upgrading your factory radiator, skip this entire step. This is the bonus round. Now I'm gonna leave the radiator out until I'm ready to, until I do all the work on the front of the engine because there's a lot to do now in order to install the supercharger and it's a lot easier with the radiator completely out of the way. Now the next step is where things get real. You're taking a 22 millimeter socket on an impact and you're gonna remove the crank pulley bolt. It's a big bolt. With the radiator out of the way, this is so much easier. And I used a counterweighted 22 millimeter socket, which made it much easier. Even though you're looking at the engine bay of a truck with less than 17,000 original miles on it. It's basically brand new and I'm tearing it apart in my driveway because that's how jailbreak rolls. Now you're gonna gather up the pulley that Magnuson supplies and this is gonna go right over the existing crank pulley. You're not removing the existing crank pulley this one will go right over it. Now the pulley has an alignment pin that you can see right there with the arrow. Align this pin with the provided pulley with the keyway shown on the crank pulley. You see what I'm saying? You'll figure it out. You can see the pin right here. I'm pointing it out. So you take this pulley, you slide it on the crankshaft pulley that's already down there as I'm pointing out, and then just kind of spin it around till you feel it fall into the keyway. It's, it's, it's easy to do. I did it, you can do it. We can all do it. It's America, baby, America. Then you take the bolt that they supply, put a little blue Loctite on it, work it in by hand like I'm doing. The pulley's gonna fall off like it's doing. Put it back on and then make that bolt hand tight and then make sure that that keyway is lined up one last time because you're gonna put some serious torque on this thing. Now you have to torque this down to 204 foot pounds. I built a rig that would actually hold the crank pulley in place out of a piece of metal and two studs. And I'm sure you can do the same. And I've got a monster torque wrench and it still took everything I had to get this thing to 204, but I did it. And you can too, because you know why? Because you're badass. There you go. And this is what it should look like when you get it done correctly. It's pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy to do. 
Okay, your next move is going to be grabbing the package from Magnuson and finding the thermostat housing tool right there. Now grab your thermostat housing and inspect the O-ring that's on there. Replace if necessary, but it should be in good shape. Make sure the, the O-ring is in good shape because you don't want to have to tear this down again. Anything that I knew I was going to have to use over again, gaskets, I got beforehand. And I'll leave links below if you want to do the same. Now take the tool provided, line it up on your thermostat, and turn it 90 degrees and your thermostat should come right out of the housing. Once you have your thermostat out, take the new housing provided and make sure you line up the jiggle valve with the little cutout in the new thermostat housing. It's pretty straightforward. It's almost foolproof, but make sure you line this up properly. You don't want to have to tear this down because your thermostat's not opening. It's pretty straightforward. Once you've got it oriented and installed properly, throw the O-ring back on and simply reinstall it using the three nuts that you took off earlier. Throw it right back on the studs. Easy peasy mac and cheesy. Once you have the thermostat housing reinstalled, you want to torque it down to 80 inch pounds, 80 inch pounds, which I believe is 6.6 .6 foot pounds. Okay, due to upload constraints, I'm going to have to refer you to part four for the rest of the installation because it's going to get a little complex installing the supercharger pulley system. Do me a solid. Like, share, and subscribe this video. I put a lot of time and energy running three cameras while I was installing this in my driveway in the winter. So I'd appreciate it for at least a like and a subscribe. Or not, your call. Links to the entire video series will be pinned below as well as any specialty tools that I used in this video.